words of power because we are kings and our words matter. So God never intended us to be robots. Free will and robots don't go together. Robots means, remote control means that you don't have free will. And the Bible talks about us not as robots, but as people with free wills, co-laborers. We are working together with him. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are king Standing here in the midst of us We raise you up with our praise And as we worship build your throne as we worship build your throne and as we worship build your throne come Lord Jesus and take your place Jesus we enthrone Why did God give you the ability to dream visions, uh, have visions? Because if you don't like the way your life is, you can change your life by having the visions. Bible is given to you, the word of God is given to you to cause you to have vision. When you encounter God in the word of God, it will cause you, it will give you vision for life. It will make you see, different, uh, see yourself differently, make you to see God differently, the world differently and make you to see your destiny and eternity, everything differently. Therefore, you get a vision by reading the word of God. So you're not too young to have vision. It's good to have vision when you're young because it will order your life. And it'll, don't worry, it will not take away fun. The other way is the harder way to live. Live without a vision, see how hard it is. It's very hard. When you're 25 years old, don't even know what you want to do. It's very hard when you're 40 years old and you don't know why you are born for, what you need to do and where you need to go, what you need to study, what you need to work on. It's a very hard life, my friend. I don't want to live that hard life. It's very easy 
with as a very young person that's why the bible says remember your creator in the days of your youth i'm telling young boys and girls here when you're young remember your creator your god because he's able to guide you into the destiny that he has for you he will take you to where you need to go what you need to study what you need to do and so on so that when you are 25 30 35 years old you won't be just drawing a blank in your mind you know not knowing what to do you'll be already set and ready to go because you know exactly what's happening in your life you're filled with a vision so i would it's young people think christian life is a hard life oh, i just want to wait brother just have fun you know and then later on when i get old i'll get become a christian you know well they think christian life is hard i'm telling you my friend that life is very hard this life is a lot of fun <laughs> it gives you a lot of peace a lot of enjoyment this is fun really this is fun because once you're on the road you know where you're going then i tell you that's fun to live your life all the fun is here in knowing god and being guided by god and knowing your destiny and knowing where you're going that's that's what it's all about so dreams and visions god has given to you to guide your life towards the destiny that he has for you to take you to the destination that he has planned and purpose for you Paul knows that you know Paul says I I you know when I was in my mother's womb God separated me for the gospel he realized later on you know he got saved much later but he realizes looking back that while he was in his mother's womb God separated him when he was born god was with him when he was raised god guided his path his paths were prescribed for him map was drawn out for him he took him through that path gave him the training that he needs to have and the kind of upbringing and the background and the and the information and the experiences that he gleaned from all the years of his life even before his salvation were all preplanned by god and god took him through that path to bring him to where he was so that he can do what he is doing today that's why he says we are co-laborers with him you know because he sees himself in god's plan and purposes and god respects us god doesn't want us to be dummies so that he does everything god wants us to think god wants us to wish god wants us to have visions and dreams and desires and and make decisions so that he can do his thing through us similarly old people you know the the older people they say well brother i'm about 70 years old what are you talking about dreaming now <laughs> well it's never too late my friend dream now <laughs> young men shall see visions and old men shall, shall dream dreams dreams are something that men are made for dreams men and women are made to dream if you don't have a dream that's very sad today If you don't have a dream in your heart if you don't uh, if you're not filled with a vision and a dream that's a very sad thing as a human being i think it's it's very unfortunate that people live a routine life they get up in the morning you know clean up eat their food go to work and uh, they don't know why they are at work so they don't do the work properly also and then when it's over by 5 o'clock it's over for 4:30 they start packing packing is the happiest thing of the day you know day's work eh? and uh, and then they leave for home come back and watch some tv eat some food go back to bed and then get up in the morning they don't know why they got up why they have to go back to work you know this is the uh, this is this is the routine they go through why because they just don't have a vision and a dream and uh, sometimes they don't like the way it is but they don't want they don't know how to change it they don't know why god has given the mind the mind has been given to you as an instrument of change if you don't like it i'll tell you you can change it if you don't like the way your life is you can change it by thinking different thoughts having dreams that god gives you visions that god gives you and being infused with god's purposes and plans and being connected to god and being guided by god led by god and being filled with purposes in your mind and ambition and desires that are holy and from god if you're filled with that i'll tell you then you will like it mind has been given to take all that in to house all these things and to and so that it can work in and through you so desires 
and uh, dreams and visions are are god given will is another thing that god this part of the mind your will people talk about will uh, will is a thing that god has uh, the ability to make decisions to think deeply analyze things and to come to conclusions that's god given you know before when man was made in the garden of eden and put there man had a free will that is why he could say no to god and yes to satan because he had a free will even if he you know even his love for god is done freely man was free he's free to love god or free to reject god that's why adam rejected god it was possible for him to reject god he was made free god wanted total freedom for man he can choose god or leave out god from his life but when he sinned man came under the bondage of satan and that resulted in the bondage of the will also so that paul says in romans chapter 7 the thing that i wanted to do want to do i'm not able to do the very thing that i don't want to do i end up doing he says this is the dilemma he says the thing that i want to do i know that this is good the law of god is good and i need to do that i should not be doing this i should be doing i know it and i want to do it but i'm not able to do it people talk about will power they say i have great will power paul says nonsense you know no will power my will power is not helping me he says the thing that i want to do i am not able to do the thing i don't want to do i end up doing he says i found out the secret i found out why because sin is resident in me i'm a sinner my nature is defiled something has gone wrong deep inside of me that's why i'm in a bondage to the devil my will is not free i am not able to do what i want to do that's the saddest thing about being without christ a person is in bondage to something else take satan the devil takes us around on leash you know like like we've got a leash around our neck and just takes us around makes us do the things that he wants us to do not allowing us to do the things that we want to do but some christian people think when you get saved what happens is god takes over the leash they think the leash is still on but god takes over the leash before the devil now god so he is walking you around and this is what christian life is they think you know that god has got you on leash he makes you do this and that so that he could you can do his will before the devil had you on leash now god has you on leash but that's totally unbiblical what god did in in and through christ in salvation is he loosed you from that bondage he made you free again when you come to christ nobody comes to christ because of compulsion many of you here most of you here are born again believers none of you would say that you came because of compulsion no are you here in church to this morning you know because somebody compelled you and somebody took you by the neck and brought you here and made you sit here you know you don't look like that you know nobody looks like that that they were they were dragged in here no you're human beings you know it is very difficult to do that you know you all came in here you came in here in spite of all odds very difficult to get in here very difficult to get a seat sometimes it's very difficult to park sometimes there's 100 different difficulties when you come in here but still you want to come in here because you love god you love god's word you want it you have made a decision you're going after it see you serve god because you love you want to it's your will you you're free jesus set you free you were under bondage to the devil before now you're free only now as a christian as a born again believer you are free in your will you have a free will now you can do whatever you want at any point in your life you can say no to christ and walk out you know that's the freedom of the will so god never intended us to be robots free will and robots don't go together robots means uh, remote control means that you don't have free will and the bible talks about us not as robots but as people with free wills co-laborers we are working together with him see some christian people think that once you become a christian you keep the mind in shelf you know no use you become very spiritual you know 
to become holy don't use your mind because the mind is a hindrance uh, uh, to what god is trying to do mind is worldly so put that away don't use your mind you know so even worship services are turned into only an emotional experience where uh, you know uh, you know don't think too much that's the kind of attitude some people have if you happen to be totally unconscious that's well and good something spiritual is happening you know <laughs> like one fellow told me i went in there by brother i was just knocked out in a moment when everybody was leaving somebody woke me up praise god I said you could have slept at home you know so we think we are if you're unconscious don't know what happened that's a very great spiritual experience and uh, Uh, we've gone through something great no you brought you've come here we don't uh, fill you with some kind of frenzy so that uh, you know you get lost in that and and lose your ability to think no we want you to think we are seated, seated in a comfortable atmosphere why because we want you to think and we preach and teach the word of god and reason with you with the word of god because god wants your mind to be working at all times want you to think uh, want you to analyze these things want you to get your bible and open it and see if it is so and want you to go back and check to see if what is said is so and if it is right embrace it believe it do it and practice it and get the full benefit of it that's how god made us all right so let me give you some examples to show you how god wanted us to use our mind and emotions and will and desires and everything all right the first example i'm i'm not going to turn to the verses because these are all things that are familiar to you this is found in genesis chapter 2 uh, adam when he was created god brought all the animals that he had created before adam you remember and wanted him to name the animals now naming is not uh, you know uh, like what some people think today uh, it's you know naming uh, these days you know uh, nice sounding name is more important uh, Uh, then the meaning it <laughs> seems like but there you, you read the bible and it's very interesting when they when they named you know for example when jacob's wives had children they named each time saying the reason why they named the child so because this is so i name him so because this happened when he was born i name him such that's how that's the way they named it. naming was never done uh, in isolation to these meanings that are attached to it meanings are very important the significance the meaning is very important name was given because of that some it was something that happened in their lives something that god did for them in remembrance of that that name spoke of that particular thing in their lives they named the child like that so, uh, so name was a very naming was a very deep thing it's not just a very superficial thing and uh, many times they named a child uh, or a person you know so that the child or a person can have that particular nature or characteristic of the person that is named after all right when god told adam to name all the animals it was not that he wanted to name them as cats dogs and horses and donkeys you know it's not like you know put a name tag on them you know so we'll know what it is you know it's not like that god was actually telling adam adam assign to these animals nature and character what do you want them to be what do you want this thing to be what kind of nature should it have see in the bible in job in the book of job we read that god is telling job look at the war horse he says job is very discouraged down and he's hanging in his head and crying and and feeling sorry for himself and all, and so on god says have you seen the war horse how it faces the battle it never withdraws it charges when the enemy comes not afraid he says god says i made the war horse like that and you are made better than the war horse so don't run from your problems don't be afraid don't be complaining don't sit in the corner and feel sorry for yourself be better than a war horse in your situation in your circle get up lift up your shoulders high look up straight face the enemy face all odds and against all odds you subdue and dominate everything and come up in life because i made you better than a war horse god says god gave it a nature and a character what kind of nature and character did god give god gave the nature and character that adam assigned for that horse 
when god said name it adam must have looked at that horse and says i like that horse to be like that having this nature so that today we talk about horse power you know i want that horse with that kind of a nature and character god says if that's what you wish that's what it'll be you called it that and that's what it's going to be hello because you called it so now just look at how much god encourages the use of adam's mind his intelligence he is made intelligent like god god says use your mind what do you want now a lot of christian people are like that say well whatever it is lord <laughs> what do you want your life to be like well whatever it is what kind of a girl you want to marry what whatever what of what kind of a boy you are well anything <laughs> what kind of job you like well anything what do you want to become just anything i have nothing specific we think we are very spiritual saying that <laughs> if god was in your home and asking you what you want it be just like that with adam and said what do you want this thing to be specify its nature and character each one just imagine adam specifying the nature and character of all the animals the birds and the fish and everything that we see today he specified the nature and character or oh, how intelligent he must have been how deeply he must think would just to pick out a name you know takes a month for us <laughs> just to pick out one name for a child we go buy books and everything you know and we go into the internet google it and, and look for everything but look at adam with all these animals he's just playing with his mind he's saying well i want it to be like this i want that one to be like that i want the, this one to be like this he is specifying its nature and character god is telling him to do it god says you think you tell me what you want god who created man just enjoys looking at this just like you would enjoy your child doing that you know your child is like you when he uses his intelligence his mind and makes decisions you look at it and you enjoy it because he is now specifying you what he wants right at one time he used to take ice cream and put it in his mouth when he didn't know what it was but now he comes with you he won't let you order he's a different person he said no i want this he won't let you go where you want he'll say no i want to eat over here i want to eat this particular ice cream i want this particular brand he knows where everything is you know and parents are very thrilled about it they say boy you know if you don't know anything ask my son you know he knows where every ice cream is sold <laughs> and where you get these things and he's got the phone numbers for home orders you know <laughs> they've got it all ready <laughs> and you're more than happy to give it to them why because you take pleasure in seeing them use their brain their desires you love to see the desire when he says i want chocolate chip you know i say and you grew up in an age when there was only vanilla ice cream you know <laughs> now there's so many kinds there's 50 60 different kinds in some uh, ice cream shops in the world you know and these kids have memorized the whole list you know and and, and they they tell you all kinds of names that you can't even get it in your mouth you know and you're happy you're proud of that why because he's using his mind he has desires when you see his desire you want to give him what he desires and i want to tell you today that god loves for you to exercise your ability to have desires <laughs> there is nothing wrong in you having desires christians must understand there is nothing wrong if you had a desire my friend you're not made to be like a sanyasi believe me sanyasi is a holy man you know I, I, that's just uh, forsaken everything and stays in the mountains or something like that no god didn't make you for, like that god made you to have certain legitimate desires amen
Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. And I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good, and I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. You've given me eternal life, and your word to light my way. You've given me a spirit, with new mercies every day. Jesus, you are so good. You are so good, Jesus. You are so, so good, and I just want to thank you in everything. You've given me eternal life, you've given me eternal life, and your word will light my way. You've given me spirit with new mercies every day, Jesus. You are so good. So good. There's nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. And I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. You've given me confidence. You've given me a confidence. And my soul is filled with Supply my every need. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. 